In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Well, good morning, those in church and those at home or elsewhere, perhaps. I don't know where you are uh, when I look at your pictures, but most welcome joining us this morning. It is, of course, Mothering Sunday. I hesitate to use the secular Mother's Day, but Mothering Sunday, and there'll be more about that in the sermon, of course. However, we do remember, as we light our Paschal candle, that today is not only a day of rejoicing for many, but also a difficult day for others who, for many reasons, may carry feelings not of joy, but of sadness or otherwise pain from the past or even in the present. And as we join together in unity within the Christian family, we remember them throughout the service that this day that pain may not be too great. And we acknowledge why we have gathered. We have gathered together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit and strengthened by sharing God's gifts, we may give ourselves to the service of God and all people. And we have our seasonal invitation to confess our sins, those things we do wrong which damage our relationship with God and with other people. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and in faith. So let us confess our sins to God, who forgives us in Christ. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, strengthen you to do God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we pray, God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns, and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. Two of our hymns today for Mothering Sunday have words written, as you'll see on the order of, on the uh, hymn sheet, by Reverend Ali, and she has written words, different words, to many familiar hymn tunes, and these two she wrote, among others, for this Mothering Sunday, and we're very pleased to say Ruth is going to be our soloist today, leading you at home in your singing, and we in church in our humming. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. All our blessings, all our joys with thy 
thankful hearts we sing. Lord of life and Lord of love, accept the praise we bring. For parents and for children, for husbands, wives, and friends, for those whose care then falls us with love that never ends. All our blessings, all our joys, with thankful hearts we sing. Lord of life and Lord of love, accept the praise we bring. For fellowship and friendship, we both receive and give for those who shared our journey and taught us how to live. All our blessings, all our joys, with thankful hearts we sing. Lord of life and Lord of love, accept the praise we bring. For all who've shared our sorrow, walked with us in our pain, who've held our hand through darkness and showed us light again. All our blessings, joys with thankful hearts we sing. Lord of life and Lord of love, accept the praise we bring. In sacrifice and service, your love is clearly shown. Your outstretched arms embrace us to bring us safely home. All our blessings, all our joys, with thankful hearts we sing. Lord of life and Lord of love, accept the praise we bring. The first reading is from Exodus chapter 2, starting at verse 1. A man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. 
Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because she said, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians, starting at verse 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. If we are being afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. If we are being consoled, it is for your consolation, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we are also suffering. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our consolation. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. speak with the words of God and may we hear those words in our hearts and our minds through Jesus our Lord and Savior. Amen. Do sit down. When my mother was still alive it was increasingly difficult to find in the shops cards which celebrated Mothering Sunday rather than its relatively new secular form, Mother's Day. Today was never meant to be just about mothers. The word we use, mothering, has a much broader meaning. The day itself dates back to the medieval tradition of going to Mother Church and taking an offering to present at the altar. The fact that this was done at the midpoint of Lent made it something of a break for people who were enduring a fasting period or a period of self-discipline during this season. I'm not sure how many people fast or give something up during Lent these days, but if you are, I hope you remember that Sundays don't count because every Sunday is a festival because every Sunday is a day of resurrection 
and fasting does not have to happen. Mid-Lenting Day, as it was called, was a special day off, and hence was also known as Refreshment Sunday, or Letare Sunday, from the Latin word for rejoice. It was only in Victorian times it developed into the custom of sons and daughters who were working away from home, being allowed to travel back to their families and taking gifts for their mothers. So today, I suppose I'm saying is a unique day in the year to give thanks for mothering in a very broad sense, and perhaps for Mother Church, and of course, for our own mothers. But we do have to acknowledge, as I mentioned as I lit the Paschal candle, that this is a day many people find quite difficult. For many, this day underlines silent personal griefs and sorrows. Quiet tears will be shed by many on this day for children who have died, for children who have rejected their parents, for relationships that never happened, for children that never were. There will be tears for mothers who have loved and have been loved and are now sorely missed. But there will also be tears for some mothers who may have loved too much and for some who may not have loved at all. All in all, a day of very mixed emotions. Which brings us to that rather short gospel we heard, providing something of an opposite to balance out the risk of over-sentimentalizing this day or getting drawn down by our thoughts for others, or the thoughts within ourselves. Mary, Jesus' mother, often elevated by centuries of church tradition to a a very high status, it's easy to overlook the fact that she was a teenage girl, pregnant before marriage, forced, very heavily pregnant, into a long journey on the back of a donkey, compelled to flee with Joseph and the baby Jesus as refugees, to a foreign land, hardly the stuff of chocolates and roses. It's only a few short weeks ago we celebrated Candlemas and we heard the prophet Simeon tell Mary that a sword would come to pierce her heart, a prophecy tragically fulfilled on that first Good Friday as Mary waited at the foot of the cross. And surely this is where the nature of Mary finds its truest expression. Her mother's love becomes a beacon to all who truly love as a mother. She teaches us that love is vulnerable, that it suffers, that it takes risks. If we didn't love, if we couldn't love, then those painful realities that upset the equilibrium of all of our lives, rouse, sickness, death, loss, broken relationships, and so on, all these would matter far less to us. But we do love, and we have that capacity for great love. And that's why those things hurt so acutely. Mothering Sunday, placed so near to Holy Week, reminds us that a relationship, any relationship really, without pain, is likely to be a relationship without love. In fact, if we love, then we put ourselves in the very path of pain and suffering. To love is to put yourself at risk, and your heart will sometimes be squeezed hard and sometimes broken but we can't wish it any other way, for we're made in the image of a God of love. And love, real love, costs. It's a very expensive commodity, and sometimes we have to pay for it with the currency of our tears. Mothering Sunday, placed so near to Holy Week, is also placed so near to Easter. And that reminds us of more. For we who know what Easter brings 
how that the cross proved to be the place of victory, that after what seemed like the end with Jesus dying came the rising to new life. And if we want resurrection, if we want new life in our lives and our relationships, then we must be prepared for the way of the cross. Because resurrection can only come by way of risk and pain and suffering which the cross represents. The love of Jesus and the love of Mary both teach us that the only sort of loving and the only sort of living worth having are those which will take risks, which will place themselves in the path of suffering, which will face piercing even to the heart. Mothering Sunday is a day to honor and celebrate. Celebrate all those who've provided mothering in our lives, and that, of course, can be both men and women. Even those who may have had difficult relationships with their own mothers will nonetheless know of people, both women and men, who've been their companions, who have influenced, who have supported, who have nourished and guided them in their lives. Today's very brief gospel brings together the themes of mothering and the passion of Jesus. And it's an intensely moving episode as Jesus hangs there on that cross, his mother and John, the beloved disciple, close by. John, the only male figure mentioned, all the rest are women. The supposedly strong people, the men, had deserted left behind Christ with a handful of grieving women who, despite the awfulness of what they were witnessing, remained steadfast and faithful to the end. And we can scarcely comprehend the emotional and psychological pain Mary must have felt. And Jesus takes that moment of agony to say something hugely important. Here is your son. Here is your mother. And in doing so, he set the seal on a message to all of us that we have a responsibility to care for one another. All who follow Christ are united within God's love and carry that responsibility what binds Jesus' as followers together more than just himself is this recognition of each other's humanity and the need both to give and to receive love. This is part of the new covenant, the new way of relating to one another and a new way of relating to God. And it finds its origins in God whose very nature is love. It is often said that with those two expressions, here is your son, here is your mother, Christ was bringing into being a new family, the Christian family. One final thought, a reminder from my own personal Lent study book that draws on the visions of Julian of Norwich a 14th century mystic who speaks to us down the ages, a woman so far ahead of her time and the insights that God gave her that she wrote down and helped unpack. And if we pause and consider her words, it's only natural and obvious that a God who gave birth to creation, who gave birth to the world, who made both Eve and Adam in God's image, must be more than a father figure, must have something in common with a woman who gives birth. And in the Jewish and Christian traditions, in the scriptures as well, there are many examples of feminine imagery used for God though many of them were conveniently lost or forgotten over the centuries. One very important example of the survivors 
are the words of Julian of Norwich. I'm going to share just a few with you. She wrote, A kind, loving mother who understands and knows the needs of her child will look after it tenderly because it is the nature of a mother to do so. As the child grows older, she changes her methods, not her love. This way of doing things is our Lord at work in those who do them. Wonderful words, those. And a lot to think about as a child grows older, she changes her methods, not her love. We ret routinely refer to God as our Father. We see Jesus in male form hanging on the cross. But today, of all days, we should leave the final word to Julian of Norwich, who concluded, Thus God is our mother. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, into our church community, pour the insight and discernment we need to become your family. May we learn to love you more as we learn to live and work in harmony with each other. Help us to focus on you and the needs of others. Help us to discern your vision for the churches of our benefice. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Into the unease and weariness of our world, particularly during this time of COVID, we ask you to pour the reality and wholesome truth we need, that we may learn mutual trust and support one another in love. Remember today Nazanin Sagari Ratcliffe, who is to appear in court in Iran later today. We pray that justice will be done so that she can be reunited to her family. We pray also for those who are forced to leave their homes, their families or their countries because of war and famine. Pray for those who must watch their children die or send them away in order to protect them. We remember today the victims of the Dumblay massacre 25 years ago and hold up before you their parents who still mourn their loss. We pray for all these that you will give them your peace and your comfort. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord, into the laughter and tears of family life, pour the freshness of your living presence. Help us to work at our relationships and deepen our love one for another. We pray for all new parents and their babies, all who are giving birth today. We pray for all who are vulnerable, that they may be protected from harm. We pray for those who long for children, but have not been able to realize their dream of holding their own child in their arms. We ask that your love might soothe the ache of emptiness in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, into the loneliness and pain of those who feel rejected and unvalued, pour your compassion and reassurance 
that each person may know the full extent of your love for them. We thank you for the love that we have received from mothers, fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers and other family members. We pray for those who, who remember with great affection and commend them to your loving care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who depend on their children and for children who have to take care of their parents. We think of parents who are frail in body or mind or chronically sick. We ask that you give both carer and cared for the love, strength and patience that they need. We give you thanks, loving God, for comfort and sympathy, reassurance and practical care when we are ill and sad. Make us all aware of the needs of those around us and let our loving show in action. In a moment of silence, we hold before you those who have asked for our prayers, those whom we have asked to pray for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, may the dying know your reality and find comfort and hope in you. May those who have died in faith live forever in the beauty of your holiness. Pray especially for Avril Kerry and her family and friends who mourn her. We hold before you all who have lost parents in recent months and are still coming to terms with their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, may the way we live with one another Proclaim the truth of your constant love for us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we come to the peace, so we hear a verse from Romans introducing that peace. We're reminded, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Peace be with you, one and all. Peace and peace, everyone at home. Hi, yes, indeed. Wonderful stuff. Excellent. And him from the pen of Reverend Ali once again for those who gave us life and breath. Thank you.
We look to you, our mothering Lord, who shows love's cost and love's reward. Your passion fiercer than the grave, nailed to the world you came to save. So teach your people how to live, how to endure, how to forgive. Teach us to trust, to sacrifice, to share the love that has no price. God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept all we offer you this day in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. We turn past the Eucharistic prayer that's in full to the responses that are given with a special Eucharistic prayer for this Mothering Sunday. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Cradling God, we thank and praise you because, like a mother, you brought all things into being. Through trial and truth-telling, touch and tenderness, you nurtured a people and led them in the ways of justice and of peace. When the time came for you to dwell among us in flesh and blood, your Holy Spirit called a woman to be the God-bearer, that in her we may behold that our bodies could bring forth your glory. And so we join with angels and archangels and all the household of heaven to sing the song of your eternal joy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Redeeming God, you called a woman to be closest to your son at the moment of his nativity, at the place of his crucifixion, and in the wonder of his resurrection. Like a mother hen gathering her chicks, you draw the weary, the lost, and the betrayed to the abundant table of your kingdom. Send your Holy Spirit on your church that it may radiate gladness at its destiny with you. And by that same Spirit, sanctify this bread and this cup that they may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread and gave you thanks, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, drink this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Yearning God, bless every mother who gives and does not count the cost, who toils and does not seek for rest, who labors and does not ask for any reward, save that of knowing that she does your will. Visit and heal the sadness of those 
whose calling to be a mother has not been fulfilled. Transfigure the distress of any whose experience of raising a child has meant a sword has pierced their own heart. Come close to all who find they cannot look upon a parent with either gratitude or grace. Hasten the day when the Holy Spirit descends like a bride prepared for you, when all desires are known and from you no secrets are hid, ever living, ever giving God, Trinity of mercy and love, in whom we pray. Amen. Now, as our Savior has taught us, we unite to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As this bread is broken, so may we be broken. As Christ was broken and resurrected, so may we be made whole. So let us draw near with faith to receive all that God offers us through the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us share together in remembrance that Christ died and lives for us today and be fed by his spiritual gifts freely offered us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. body of Christ broken for you, the body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for me. blood of Christ shed for us all.
and we pray together. You have opened to us the scriptures, O Christ, and you have made yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Abide with us, we pray, that blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the days of our life, and at its end behold you in the glory of the eternal Trinity, one God forever and ever. Amen. And so we come to the notices. Oh my word, a sermon without a single mention of COVID. What is the world coming to? Perhaps it will return with a vengeance next week. I trust not. But uh, there we are. I hope you have a wonderful and enjoyable day doing whatever you are doing. And thank you to Ruth for singing for us this week. And uh, thank you to Abby for continuing to play. And Stephen for his working on the technology as well as for our readers and prayers that come week by week, um, making this all possible. And uh, Stephen has changed sides in church. Uh, those of you who know that the box with all the controls for the sound system was at the front here, it is now at the back because he can then control the sound better. And we hope that the sound of uh, singing and so on was better balanced today as a result of that. So I'm sure if you can give Stephen some feedback, that would be greatly appreciated. And thank you um, for getting that work done, Stephen, and others who've assisted, like Martin Wimbush and so on. Right, uh, today across the benefits, as I've been suggesting, um, take a moment to reach out to somebody else who may appreciate that reaching out very greatly, uh, if you possibly can. And uh, we're looking a little ahead now towards next Sunday is Passion Sunday, then it's Palm Sunday, and then it's Easter. And uh, isn't that wonderful? Because that means we're also moving towards those dates the government has given us for easing things. And of course, we're looking to make the most of the opportunities ahead. And Ruth has been working hard with the Messy Church Group, arranging the trail around the village and so on, and sending bagged up stuff to families to be able to do that. And of course, we're looking to uh, get palm crosses to everybody who is part of our worshipping family uh, over the next couple of weeks. So things are moving in that direction even if we are doing it all on our own initiative. Um, but we remain hopeful that we may be able to have a service outside on Easter Day, unless we are told otherwise. So that is what we are planning. But there will, as I've put on the notices, there will be communion on that day, which will be streamed uh, for those for whom that's very important. All right, uh, the place of memorial changes at Newton Solney in the community there. And on the back page, um, well, a letter I've sent out to all the PCC members. If you haven't spotted that or sat and had time to reflect on what I'm writing there, then please do take an opportunity this week uh, to read and to see what I sense is happening and what will happen over the coming months. And do pray, please, because the whole of our future needs prayer, uh, along with the whole of society and businesses reorganizing themselves and so on. We are part of that process. Uh, and so we have to have a lot of discussion, a lot of exploration, seeking God's will for our way forward, and that needs your prayers undergirding all of that. So please do add that to your daily prayers. And so our final prayer and blessing. So let us pause for a moment. Heavenly Father, as we give thanks to you, we bow before you as our father and our mother. We bow before your son, Jesus Christ, 
our friend, our Lord, our King, our Saviour. And we open ourselves to your Holy Spirit, your Spirit of love that unites us, that inspires us, that when we allow it flows between us and helps build us into your family, into your people, from whom your Spirit flows out into the world in service for others, in the light and peace and joy of your love, touching the lives of others when we do your will. We pray that we may do so this day and every day. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Jesus, good above all other, gentle child of gentle mother. Our final hymn for today. Thank you. So let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.